हेलो नमस्कार गुड आफ्टरनून दिस इज सिमरन सिंह यू ऑल आर वॉच यूकर्स ऑन पी एम ई विद्या चैनल नंबर सिक्स नाइन एंड ट्वेल्व एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू एवरी वन इन एन सी आर टीज लाइव इंट्रैक्शन इट्स अराउंड ट्वेल्व थर्टी सेवन पी एम ऑन योर वॉच एंड टूडे वी हैव आर स्पेशल सेशन फॉर यू रिगार्डिंग स्कूल लीडरशिप डिवेलपमेंट एंड द टॉपिक दैट वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग इन दिस सेशन इज रियली असेंशियल फॉर एवरी वन हुएवर इज वॉचिंग दिस सेशन एज इट इज अबाउट लीडिंग द टीचिंग लर्निंग प्रोसेस अमेंस द न्यू नॉर्मल इन गवर्नमेंट स्कूल इन सिक्किम and to make this learning process more conducive for all our viewers we are also joined by two experts let me introduce them to you we have with us dr shadma apsar namaskar ma'am namaskar simran welcome to ncrt ma'am is from ncsl national institute of education planning and administration we also have with us mr suraj kumar sharma namaskar sir welcome to ncrt sir is headmaster at a senior secondary school sikkim i welcome our two speakers in this session and with that i welcome all our viewers who have joined with this particular session if you have any of the questions it's a live interaction so you may write to us in the comment box of ncrt official besides here is our contact number for all of you on the screens you can give us a call at 8800440559 and here is our mail id as well so you can also write to us at dth.class12 at the rate ciet. and i see dot in so dr sharma as this topic that we are going to discuss today it is very special especially in the new normal and especially in such a trying situations like covid 19 so our first question to you is how has the role of school leaders evolved in the times of pandemic simran the role and responsibilities of school heads are very dynamic and evolving with the onset of covid 19 and the closure of schools across the country it was a big change and a challenge for the school leaders teachers and students and other stakeholders there were many challenges that a school leader had to face it was a huge paradigm shift to shift teaching learning from face to face to the virtual mode another challenge was to engage teachers contact each and every student involve them in teaching learning process on on various platforms certain catering to the needs of children with different learning needs was also a big challenge and even when the schools opened up in some of the states there was a big challenge in bridging the learning gaps in ensuring the continuity in learning and providing mental and psychological support to the teachers students and others there was a huge transformation or change in the teaching learning process i would say one of the key areas of national center for school leadership's curricular framework is to bring about transformation in teaching learning process and deal with the changes that come time and again school leaders are expected to have the ability to overcome the resistance and create opportunities to have uh, the ability to overcome the resistance and create opportunities for learning for smooth transition to the change the school heads had a tough task but with the support of the various initiatives by the state and the central government this change was overcome by most of them and today we have with us a uh, school principal from sikkim his headmaster in the senior secondary school and we are going to hear from him his best practices and innovations that he could bring in the teaching learning amidst the new normal in his school so sure sir we would like to know more about your journey as a school leader yeah Mr. Ram Sharma, my name is Suraj Kumar Sharma, and I am working as a headmaster in the Government Secondary School, Lingi Parents of Sikkim. It is a secondary school and not uh, senior secondary. This school is located in the south district of uh, Sikkim. It is quite uh, located in a remote area, uh, at a distance of 66 kilometers from the district headquarters and 55 kilometers from the state headquarters. It is a landlocked area. Uh, because there is no access to any other places from this this is the last uh, area the last place of the district uh, to, to at one end the school has been uh, formed in 2000, uh, 1944 by as a committee school which was later upgraded and taken over by the department of education government of sikkim this uh, the area has some major issues like uh, the problem of road uh, power connectivity power failure and Uh, internet connectivity is also an issue which were, which is now the most most needed uh, facility that uh, that is needed to the students and the uh, teachers in the school so 
this uh, this is how this is where my school is located, and it is a primarily a uh, secondary school. So as a leader, when I joined the school, so I I joined the school in December 2017, and I I. Uh, the gap between the community and the school, which was quite evident when the time I joined the school. And by the time the COVID pandemic has uh, given its uh, presence all over the world, we have already had a very good uh, community school relationship, which ultimately helped us to bridge the learning gaps between the, among the uh, learners during these two, three years of COVID pandemic. Very rightly mentioned by you, sir. Thank you so much. And sir, during this pandemic, what were the major challenges faced by the school and being a school leader? If you could inform about that to our viewers. Sure. Uh, before the, uh, even before the lockdown was imposed uh, countrywide in, on 25th March, uh, our state government has already declared a uh, closure of the school on 16 March itself uh, in the year 2020. And uh, the lockdown, uh, the, the first lockdown has... Uh, uh, in, a, uh, uh, in a sense, it has uh, brought some opportunity for the students as well as the teachers to explore the new method and new alternative modes of learning. Because uh, since the lockdown was imposed and all the schools were closed, so we were we were we were we were in a compulsion to adopt the alternative learning, alternative method of learning. Like so, the the first challenge that was there in the school was shifting from the traditional face-to-face -face class to the virtual learning, which is uh, till then. The, it was not a, not a normal activity in the schools. Then the second challenge was hand-holding of the teachers, students, as well as the parents who were there for the support of the students. And the third and the major one is the digital divide among the different classes of the students and the different categories of parents who are there with the students. So some of these challenges were the major that, that was encountered by me and my staff during the first initial lockdown of the schools, uh, lockdown and the subsequent closure of the schools. And apart from that, sir, we would also like to know from you that how during this unprecedented crisis you managed to have a proper school functioning and learning levels of the children. How was that all yes. ensured? Yes, ma'am. We have initiated some of the some of the uh, very I say <coughs> I would say uh, some of the uh, very unique initiatives, like the first one, uh, which is common to all. That is the use of social media platform. We already had a Facebook page for our school. And by the time the schools were closed, uh, I, along with my teachers, I directed my teachers and uh, they all started preparing videos for the students, video lessons for the students. And they started uploading the pages, uh, uploading the videos on the social media pages like Facebook. And then all the parents and the guardians of the students, they were connected, they were, uh, they were added to the social media pages. Similarly, WhatsApp group for all the classes and all the subjects were created and the students and teachers, they started taking classes um, through what, uh, not on real time basis, of course, but uh, you know, through WhatsApp. And uh, even our, our, the initiative of our school was, the, we, were, we were the first school to have started these kind of uh, practices in the state, and which was also documented by Information and Public Relations Department of the Government of Sikkim. So secondly, second initiative is, uh, was the homeschooling. Uh, this was developed. This initiative was started with a concept that if a student cannot come to school, let's take the school to the to their home. So in this uh, initiative, our teachers who uh, who are close to the school, close to the uh, home of the uh, students, they started visiting the houses of the students individually, keeping all the COVID protocols in mind. And they started visiting the uh, students close, uh, who reside close to their houses, uh, whatever class they are studying or whatever subject they are uh, taking. So. In, uh, in this initiative, the teachers the, the teacher could meet the children, meet their parents, and they they were able to give the instructions, the homeworks, and all everything that is required for the students to continue the class uh, their studies. Then the uh, third initiative that we started was cluster teaching. The cluster in cluster teaching, uh, our teachers were directed to take classes in a identified uh, a particular identified place, which was designated as a cluster. The teacher then uh, collect all the students who whosoever are present in and around his house. Uh, the but the unique uh, thing in this concept was that our teachers uh, were uh, teaching all the students irrespective of the classes, the schools, and subjects to which they belong to. Like uh, our teachers were teaching students from other schools also uh, and uh, from the classes which they do not usually teach in our our school and also the subjects which they are comfortable with, they take the classes for uh, the 
uh, that those subjects in this uh, cluster teaching method. So the objective was uh, our objective was none of the child should be left behind in study uh, even during these COVID times. So these are the objective in this cluster teaching. Then the another initiative that we started was uh, the usual virtual classroom through Google Ma Google Meet, Zoom, Zoom app. And at the same time, we were the, the students were assessed and they were given the certificates and grades uh, of, through the mail and WhatsApp for, the, for every assessment that they have been uh, undertaking. Then one more uh, unique initi initiative, I would say, like uh, early morning classes, because our was a rural area, our is a rural area where most of the parents, they have only one smartphone with them. And that too, they take the phone during daytime, they take the phone with them and the students were not in a position to take classes during the daytime. So our teacher started early morning classes as early as 5 a.m when the handsets, the smartphones were available with the students in their home. So this way the students could get up early, they get a fresh air in the morning and at the same time they could also attend the classes. Then periodic monitoring of every activity of the every uh, alternative mode of teaching learning that has been undertaken by the teachers, the periodic monitoring is being done by the headmasters. The, the percentage of students who are taking online classes or the cluster teaching or home schooling, these things are recorded and are forwarded to the district authority uh, for their observation and for the guidance. Uh, similarly, we have also created awareness regarding all the available resources uh, on, online like the Dixa, and the uh, uh, NCRT, the e-learning portal of the NCRT, the awareness has been created by the schools along with the teachers. Uh, and uh, also one, I have, I myself have developed one. I have, I've also attended the online learning uh, sessions of different uh, agencies and uh, I have developed one app uh, which helps the student, which can be shared through WhatsApp and email and which helps the student to speak English correctly. So this, uh, this also has helped the uh, students of the primary classes to uh, to pronounce correctly the different words of English. And yeah. uh, sure. assessment is all but done. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, virtual uh, competitions. Since the schools were closed and the students were confined to a room with the smartphone or and any other available gadgets, uh, they were feeling like uh, they were not in a school. So we have also organized virtual competition, virtual celebrations were conducted in which students took part enthusiastically. Uh, and because of these uh, competitions and other activities which are conducted online, besides the normal studies, the students, uh, they could remain, they could stay in touch with the other students also. And this has also helped, them, helped us to check on the dropout of the students because of the prolonged closure of the school. And award, and at the end of uh, the first, uh, in 2021, when the session ended, we have initiated, uh, we have instituted, rather I say, uh, we have instituted some awards and prizes for the student, like most responsive online learners. This was the award that was instituted for the students who participated, act participated actively in the online teaching learning. So that way we have encouraged them to participate more in the virtual class uh, classes also. I'm sure these approaches would have turned out to be really productive for all the students of your school. And sir, to make all this happen, I do believe that there's a big role played by parents, family members, apart from teachers and also the stakeholders who are involved. So how did you manage to involve all of them all together? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm very lucky to have a very cooperative community members in and around our school. The SMC members, the parents, the guardian of the students, and even the alumni and members who were there, uh, were they always there for the school. They all helped me to bring the students closer to the school, even in even virtually. So the first thing that I did was uh, I have conducted online meetings with the parents. By that, by conducting those meetings, the parents were also able to participate through Zoom meeting and Google Meet, which also helped them to guide their children in the in home. Then the SMC members, the parents and the alumni members, they have helped us immensely for student tracking. Student tracking in the sense because of the lockdown and the prolonged closure of the school. We were, we were apprehensive that whether the student will continue the study or they get dropped out. So the SMC members, parents and other community members, they help, uh, help us to track the students, their uh, progress in online or the virtual classrooms and the problem and uh, the problem the, the problem of access and availability availability of the digital devices with them even from parents and member, community members uh, they uh, took the students to their home to, took the students took those students to their home who don't have access to the smartphone 
they they help them by giving their smartphone to undertake the classes along with their own children so this is the way in which community help us to keep a pace with the changing new normal surat ji uh, i would like to uh, request you to please elaborate a bit more on the social media and other digital initiatives that you have taken in your school to maintain communication with the parents and the students and in teaching learning process as well so okay, please I'm elaborate sure. a bit more on that as well sure uh, social media has uh, proved to be a boon in this time during uh, for our school and for our students and parents also because all the parents were connected on the social media pages the facebook pages of our school whatsapp group has been created for smcs for parents and the students for each classes and individual subjects at the same time we have also developed a school website of a dedicated school website which was uh, which is probably the first school website developed in by a government school at their own expense in the state so this uh, website was loaded with the lessons video lessons from youtube uh, the students could uh, the teacher could uh, the the teacher uh, analyze different videos and they uploaded the they they uploaded the appropriate videos which are suitable for the students of our school so the videos are available on the website the student could go and easily uh, study the study through the videos they do not require to access a, a number of uh, youtube channels or the videos so it was at the uh, at the click of the mouse available with them we have also initiated to develop uh, an particular app for our school only in which uh, the the students and parents uh, were uh, we were supposed to give the access to the parents and students and interact through that app also uh, but it, this is in a process uh, i can say this is our future initiative also uh, it is in the process sir it is often said that uh, the change you want to bring in the world should first start from yourself so my question to you is being a school leader how can you also be a change maker and ensure new interventions in the field of teaching and learning yes ma'am uh, um, i am uh, a leader is one who like uh, who knows the way goes the way shows goes the way and shows the way so i started with the, this quote in the back of my mind like i started training myself from for the different modes and medias uh, or the available platforms and i also guided my teachers and the parents member smc members to uh, opt for this kind of this uh, media and platforms which also help uh, the which also help the students to later on to part, to use those medias and platform uh, for this uh, online or the virtual learning I'm sure, sir. This particular phase has been very tough for students as well, apart from teachers and parents, because the transition through which students have gone, basically from the offline mode of education to online, back to offline, and again to online. So, any tips or strategies of advice for any of our students, so that they could make this learning process more easy for them. So, what I think is like. Uh the most of the time we are we are afraid of the the harm the health issues regarding the on uh, with the use of the digital devices but i what i suggest uh, for all that we should uh, we should monitor uh, the use of digital devices to the parents or the any elder in the house uh, they can monitor the use of digital device with the students but uh, in any case we have to give the digital access to the digital device to the students whether it is a telephone whether it is a mobile phone smartphone or laptop or any other kind of uh, electronic devices it it has to be there because since it's the covid 19 covid is here to stay for a uh, quite a long time as we have seen a number of variants are coming up and every time schools are getting closed so it is there to stay and the use of uh, digital devices is inevitable so we need to control the timing and uh, the use of the digital devices at the same time we need to use the things uh, to for our learning with that the role of a teacher and a parent is also very important so any piece of advice for our teachers who are trying to make this new normal more easy for our students any word of advice from your end to the teachers there's a uh, the changes that, that are uh, we are facing today is it, this was totally unprecedented uh, it was totally unexpected so i suggest my teachers all the teachers across the Uh, country or across the world 
to kindly uh, try to adopt every new means of uh, means of teaching learning that are available with you presently because no one uh, we never know when we need to use all these things because zoom uh, well, zoom was always there before the pandemic also but we had not used zoom uh, during uh, pre in the pre pandemic uh, time but now it has become a new normal so whatever things you have in your hand presently you start using it so that we never know when we need to st uh, start using all those things again so thank you so much for this a beautiful message and adding to that i would also request dr shadna for the concluding remarks i would like to say that uh, <clears throat> suraj kumar sharma ji has done exceptionally well in his school and belonging to an area of geographically difficult area rather a hilly area with low network connectivity and poor uh, poor weather and everything he has made his way and he has led the school in a very exceptional way and it is remarkable the way his teachers and students are learning and engaged in the process i'm really delighted to share his best practices with uh, the leaders and our viewers today thank you and i am sure that all our teachers and the school leaders or the principals whoever is watching this session this turns out really productive for all of you as you have got a sense of the useful and the best practices that could be indulged that could be involved in your school thank you so much dr shadma and thank you mr suraj kumar for this beautiful discussion regarding school leadership development thank you thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you so much Thank you to all the viewers who have joined in with this particular session where we were discussing about leading teaching and learning processes amidst the new normal in government schools in Sikkim. Stay connected to NCERT. We'll be back with the upcoming sessions. Namaskar.